What's up? What's up? It's your boy. So we're coming back with a different video today. We're gonna do something a little different. Anybody know this fella? Road tip, road trip, tiny trucker. Check him out on YouTube. So he was a hot shot. Hanging out with this crazy person. This guy. He got me, guys. He. No. He he's saying he got me. He got me. So I will explain what happened. <laughs> but first, we're gonna do redo a review on the truck, and then we're gonna tell you why we're here. It was his idea, and it, I think it kind of backfired He's on it. Out, yeah, it backfired. Because cheap ass here. Hey, <laughs> I drive used trucks. He buys new trucks, you know. And they do not short you when they order a new truck. I promise you. So here's what we're going to review today. All right, tell us what this thing is. Right, I there, don't know. There's the there's the old Mac Anthem. I tell us talk to you guys about it, but I haven't done a review, so we figured we'd do one here with uh, old Dave. What year is it? 2020. So we got 2020 Mac Anthem. Now you guys have probably seen this truck um, everywhere. They they did a big review thing on the Anthem Black, which is just a blacked out version with a lot of upgrades. But this is a really nice truck. So what motor is in it? This has got the uh mp8 445 horse and it's max so one thing people don't know about max or a lot of people don't know if the bulldog is gold it's a mac powertrain from the front to the back so, so if it's silver it's either got like a meritor rear end or it's got an eaton transmission this has got mac mac engine mac m drive transmission and mac rear ends so this is a mac through and through through and through and that and you can tell by the bulldog if he's gold so, if it's he's Mac gold, front. he's top notch. Mac front to back. Mac front to back. Yep. Um, so it's got an MPA. Um, it's a 2020. It's it's a fleet truck. I bought this one as a. Um, I bought this truck as a uh, leftover. So it was not. This this was not a uh, special order, which is why we're here. Right. He didn't spec this order. out his way, yep. the way he wanted it. Which, like he said, is the reason we're here. So we might as well put it out real quick. So while we're here is he has 24.5 tall rubber on this truck. And the truck came with a 355 rear end. We had the rear end changed when we bought it to a 311. Right. So, so with the 311 rear end and the taller taller wheels at 70 miles an hour, I'm barely turning 12,000 RPM. Right. So he's oh, lugging the motor. And me, on the other hand, I'm running 22.5s with 355 rear so at 70 mile an hour i'm at like 1580 so i need these and he needs those yep. but but i'm getting screwed right here what happened here was when you order from the factory they all right so he's got aluminum all the way around well, out when code. you order from the factory or you're not a cheapskate you right or you're not a cheapskate well what hotshot did is he's got uh, Accurides on the outside, and we got steel inners. And it was actually, he, he was joking. He said, "Next, you're going to tell me that they're steel inners." I said, "Well, actually," and he goes, "Oh my god!" All right, so now let's get back to the truck. So when we're done here, these will be over here. Those will be over here. Yep. And uh, so I got nothing too crazy about it. The one thing, the one downside I would recommend if you guys ever get a truck for a flatbed, don't get a short wheelbase truck this is a too short of a wheelbase what um, is the wheelbase this is really small i think it's 238 or something 238 mine's like 243 and it's okay, a little close pretty, yeah. this is like 239 or even smaller 230 i can't remember but it's pretty short which okay. means once we put a headache rack on there's not a lot of room here so climbing up and down here they actually have to bend the handle just to get it to to fit so i actually like that handle though butt. i've never seen that on a truck but yeah. it's pretty cool that came with it but oh okay um the other problem is my work light is pretty much useless right because it's right behind there so um but yeah it's a it's a it's a pretty fleet spec truck it's middle of the road i would say now you were um, pretty high on this rack when we were talking no i was high on the rack on my peter oh okay sorry I, it's I, not this one i would recommend getting enclosed racks because okay. the chains and binders rust sitting out right the okay my my peter has got a five door right yeah that's what it was yeah. on his peter he's really proud of that one yeah that one's so. pretty cool um so yeah, the Mac is, um, uh, we like it. It's got more guts than our Peterbilt does with the pack car. Um, yeah, he's over here talking all kind of smack on the Peterbilt, <laughs> but he can say that because he bought a 579 and he bought a Mac. It's his money. He's allowed to talk yeah. it. So we'll climb up inside and kind of show you. Let me climb first. Though. Go ahead. Uh, I don't have to climb so high anymore. 
Right. <laughs> I'm gonna have to jump like I'm on yeah. a trampoline. So nothing. You'll have to excuse the mess. Mess. Um, we it's work pretty around plain here. Jane. It's not a crazy. It doesn't have all the wood grain dash and that type of thing. But it, it runs good. It's quiet. It's uh, it's very quiet. It's got a lot of different um, a lot of different features to it. Um, there's no gear shifter. This does run the M drive 12 speed. So um, there's a pedal missing. Yeah, there's a pedal missing. Well, don't mind the flip flops. Flat better with a flip flop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's got the M drive. Now what? The first thing I said here because I know there's a lot of flatbed or a lot of automatics that don't have trailer brake. His actually does down here. So yep. you can pull the trolley brake if you need it. I've noticed a lot of flatbeds. I don't know why they spec it without it, but now, they do. Now, our Peterbilt doesn't have the trolley brake. Right, okay, so, It doesn't yeah. have the J-handle. This one does. Um, and now, he was telling me earlier that my... And he, he had the, the right reasons and everything that his brand new... What was it, a 19 Peterbilt? 21. 21 Stewart Peterbilt is just as outdated as my 09 Peterbilt. Like, literally the same... And, and it's all the little things, right? Like the dash here. If you look, if you can show them the dash, you push. Button. If you can show them the dash, you look at the dash here. It's just a little upgraded with the lights on. You know, it's red, white, and blue because it's a Mac Anthem. It's just got a fancier dash. You know, and it's the little things, right? I've got um, USB charging ports up here, and you can route your wires through this little channel. Um, it's got a mount mounting spot for your suction cup deal. It's got. Um, you know, it's got USB ports in the back. Like my my Pete and his Pete does not have USB ports. No. It's also got, you know, this is just comes from the factory. Set your phone Oop, right in there. Right. You know, it's designed for that. That's, it, it's just the little things like that, that the gauges look modern. You know, they kind of look beefy and modern, or not gauges, whatever the it is, or switches. Switches, right. Um, when you come back here, you know, the Peterbilt's got, uh, the Peterbilt's got, you know, Peterbilt has one outlet for the, for the microwave. This one's got outlets here. You got USB charging ports. You got, you know, all these different different features. Um, you got an outlet down in the bottom, and you got an outlet on this side for your TV, um, which I don't have a TV in here. Plus an outlet behind your microwave for your uh, um, for that. So it had it's just it's just more updated. It's more up to date. Um, it's more than, like a home. Yeah, yeah than the yeah. than the Peterbilt is. Peterbilt's just. I feel like they're selling on their name. They're, the truck itself is just not not up to date as much. So. Right, and we were talking about that earlier with Cummins and Ram, the same thing. You know, they're living on the name, but... Yeah. I it, mean, this thing's even got, which you won't be able to see it because it's been off for too long, but if you come down here, you've got all your diagnostics. Um, we can actually, it has a, um, it's got a virtual dipstick now it it won't even let you look at it until it's cooled down for a little bit oh, and it'll wow. show a picture it'll show actually a picture of a dipstick and show you where the now, does it have was. a real dipstick too? it does too okay. yeah, you can check them both but um but yeah it's got i mean it's got everything in here it's got the uh you know your you can jump back and we've got uh the lifetime you'll like this we've got our um Let's see, fuel consumption. Here we go, life of vehicle total. So this is super handy. We can come in here and we can look at the mileage. We can look at the engine hours, time of service, fuel used. And you bought this everything. new, correct? I so bought this new, yeah. 151 days is what you owned it? Yep, 151 okay. days wow. is what I've owned it. So they put it in service, it starts at zero. How, your highest speed is average. That wonderful high idle time because we don't run an APU. Um, so, and there's my average fuel economy over the life of the truck, so. Right. You know, it just it just has more features than than a uh, is is it a big deal? No, but when you couple it to the fact that this truck's got a little more guts, it'll pull a little better in the Peterbilt with the same 445 horse engine. Um, it just makes it a little better. So and they're probably right. Getting the steer tires. All right, guys. So we're out here in front of the Mac. They just came and got us because they're ready to uh, get the work done. So you know we're gonna do it this way he's gonna tell us why he bought the mac but let me turn this camera around because you don't need to see me so basically we bought the mac because it was the right price um when i first started the company we were buying things based on price that's why i've got a peterbilt and why i've got a mac um these were leftover trucks so my recommendation if you're looking for a truck right now trucks are hard to come by but if you're looking for a new truck try to find a company that ordered a bunch and didn't buy them all because what you can do is you can buy their truck and they want to get rid of them. So I think we spent one, 
with FET out the door, I think this, and warranty. 400,000 mile warranty, engine after treatment and chassis. I think we spent 146 on this truck. Wow, So not bad. Not too bad. If you spec'd it out and ordered it, it'd probably be around 160, 165. So, um, so it was sitting on the lot it was though, sitting right? on the lot, okay. correct. It was, it was an order oh, that oh. they, okay. it was an order that they canceled. Um, so um, there are some things I don't like about it. I wish it didn't have the chrome bumper. Uh, I like the body color plastic bumper that they come with. I just think it looks better. But you know, a lot of people like the chrome and it's it's just a company truck. I don't even drive the thing hardly at all. I'm right. out in it this week, but normally I got a driver in it. So, um, but yeah, so that's why we bought the Mac and I'll do a review myself one of these days of the Peterbilt too. And of my trailers, cause I got a couple of doors yeah, here. Now I'm gonna tell you something. You guys should go over to Road Trip Tiny Trucker. Cause if he doesn't do it, I'm gonna track his driver down. He got a medium duty Peterbilt yeah. that he just built. And you hotshot guys think you have the ultimate setup. You ain't seen nothing yet, but I will find a truck or the driver, one or the other. We'll do the, we'll do a review of that one. Um, it's yeah, we found a day cab that was all set up, ready to go. A day cab P337 medium duty, single axle. And we would put drops a 53 inch sleeper on it. Didn't even put a, it's all matched and color matched with the exact, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it, it's we'll a gorgeous truck. That. Yeah, and that's his, you know, that's as close as he's got left to hot shot. Yep. So you got, we just figured we'd give you a little, little different taste on uh, some big trucks. It's a nice truck, you know, I've just looked around it. So um, it, just be, just be aware if you do watch my videos, I'm a nerd. So my videos are very <laughs> number intensive. I try to crunch the numbers get people to understand what they mean, how to calculate them. So many people are running their businesses and going into the ground. And it's just, you, you really have to know, you got to understand what the numbers are. Yes, this truck was expensive brand new, but I've got 400,000 miles of relatively low maintenance to non-maintenance. These new trucks I got, I, I do 40 to 45,000 miles on an oil change. Right now, so, you know. and we were talking earlier uh, he's impressed with this and I'm surprised with this that Mac has a bay You said just for over the road trucks, yeah, so right? Most Mac dealerships have got what they call an uptime bay and what they're trying to do is set themselves apart from Peterbilt and Freightliner who tell you we'll get to you in three weeks What it is is it's one bay that's just for quick quick things So you come in with a problem they pull it in they do a diagnosis right then when you bring it in and if it's something real quick, they'll fix it and get you back on, on the road. That's something Mac's trying to do because they're trying to set themselves apart from, they're trying to get into the over the road game. I mean, that's, they're not really big into the over road and, and their anthem is the is the Mac over the road, so. Right, um, and, and Mac has been making dump trucks for 10, a lot of years. So if they can hold up to them, they can hold up to out of here, but. And a lot of people talk about that these things don't, that, that Mac doesn't have the dealerships. There's everywhere there's a Peterbilt dealership, there's a Mac dealership. They forget that Mac is huge in the vocational world. So yeah. there's dealerships everywhere. You just don't see them because you don't look for You're them. You're not looking much. for them. You're so. looking for the Peterbilt dealerships. And, and a lot of the Mac dealerships aren't right off the interstate, unfortunately, because they're not. Right, they're dump truck they're related. Dump truck right. related, right. So, but uh, overall, we really like it. You can see a lot of influence from the Volvo. The M drive transmission is basically the I shift transmission. The, the added little cut you know, driver comfort things, that's Volvo. So you can see the Volvo input, but it still feels pretty much like a Mac. It's still got that kind of muscly feel to it. And, I don't know. And there's there's a lot of room, and I I noticed that a lot because I've been driving Peterbilt's, and I'll tell you, there is no room in a 386, a 389, 379. There, there's no room in them. So these, this is an overall nice truck. Um, you know, he says it's a good ride. And uh, his well, drivers have now that you're taking my big, nice, comfy tires. But, <laughs> but he was crying about them tires an hour ago. But, uh, well, actually, this has been going on since I bought my truck. Yeah. He's like, well, get some tires because I had super singles. But, all right, guys, that's a review on the Mac Anthem 2021. Check him out, Road Trip Tiny Trucker. If you really want to know your numbers, go back in his videos. What's it called? On the Glass. Oh, uh, going to the glass. Going to They're the glass. All just math. Just 
I do one that's called partials are painful. If you're partialing, you really need to watch it because all it, it, it just shows that most people aren't calculating their partials correctly. And it shows you how to calculate the right amount. And you'd be surprised how much you're actually making a mile on some of these partials. So. Right. I mean, you can make money on partials, you can, absolutely. but you got to know what you're doing. You might think you're making $4 a mile. You're only making $2.90. You, right. know? you can still make money on partials. Don't get me wrong. I hate partials, but you can still make it on them. But you got to understand what you're calculating. You don't just add your... I'm not going to get into the details. Go watch that right. video. Go watch the video. He's got tons of them all about the numbers. If I have a numbers question, this is who I call. So... <laughs> All right, guys. Well, well, we weren't able to switch tires um, because my truck had super singles and it had shorter wheel studs. So what that means is I barely made it uh, with my my steel and aluminum, and he's got dull aluminum. So he still wants to do it. So I will probably look for four steelies um, and then trade him and sell four aluminums, I'm not sure. Um, but that's kind of where we're at with it. So, but in that, we noticed that I had a tire flat. Must have just went flat because it's not, uh, you know, it's a little cupped, but it, it would have blew out, you would think, with the weight and all that on it. So, right now, oh, Yellow Jacket's in the doctor. She getting, uh, getting her shoes toes fixed up so that's what we're gonna do and me and old boy gonna run on down the highway to st louis <clears throat> and i'm going to effingham and he's going alabama so that's where we're at with it but man if you guys are in the new trucks definitely check out that mac anthem man definitely check it out it's a really comfortable truck and i didn't get to do it because um the pull this out but the steering wheel has a lot of nice controls but all right guys let me get off here get a drink get ready to get out of here see you on down the highway guys if you like the video you're looking for more content like this like share subscribe hit that ding ding and i will see you tomorrow peace peace peace